never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? Ooh, I poked myself. Ugh, it's not too bad, though. It only hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Sleeping Beauty. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time in an enchanted land far, far away, there lived a king and a queen. One day, after many, many years of hoping for a baby, the king and queen had a little baby girl a princess named Briar Rose. Everyone in the land was so excited about the new baby princess, especially the fairies. You see, fairies love babies. Aw, that's so sweet. So the fairies all got together to plan a party to celebrate little Briar Rose. Fairies also love parties. <laughs> Ooh, I love the streamers, Twinkles. Thanks, boss. And Sparkle, those cupcakes look scrumptious. Buttercup, how's the music coming? Great, I've almost got the speakers set up. Speakers work. Excellent. Everything was shaping up for a wonderful party. Well, all except for one teeny tiny detail that everyone overlooked. No one had invited Grimsley. Grimsley was not like the other fairies. The other fairies liked to flit and flutter about, singing sweet songs and sprinkling pixie glitter on everything. And Grimsley, well, Grimsley liked to do sort of mischievous things like gluing fairies' wings together. We're stuck! And filling the pixie glitter jars with dirt. And she absolutely loved to put curses on the other fairies. Curse you! I turn you into a frog! Hey! Wow, that is so mean. Grimsley just wasn't very nice. Maybe that's why it never occurred to any of the other fairies to invite her. Anyway, the party started out like any other fairy party. It was lots of fun and everyone was happy until... What? I just came to bring a present for the baby. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. The king and queen opened Grimsley's present, but they were confused. What is this? A spindle? Briar Rose is far too young to play with a spindle. See kids, a spindle is a sharp, pointy thing used to make yarn. So not exactly a good gift for a baby. But then Grimsley said, You didn't read the card. It explains the curse. A curse? Oh no. This is gibberish. It says here that when Briar Rose turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a hundred years sleep. The only thing that will wake her is true love. And good luck with that. Hard to find love when you're nothing. What did she say? She just put a curse on Briar Rose. A purse? A curse. Oh no, curses are bad. That's right kids, curses are bad, especially when they're from an angry fairy. Grimsley flew away, but the damage was done. Everyone was majorly bummed out. The next day, the king and queen banned Grimsley from the kingdom and ordered that all spindles be thrown away. This is a no spindle zone, no spindles and it remained a no-spindle zone for exactly 16 years. And then one day, a nearly grown-up Briar Rose went exploring around the castle. <laughs> hmm, I don't know about this. What you doing? I'm spinning. <laughs> really? This is how I spin. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Makes me dizzy, though. <laughs> I'm spinning yarn. Then I'll make you a pretty dress. Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, I've never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? Ooh, I poked myself. Ugh, it's not too bad, though. It only hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Oh, well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. It can't be. Briar Rose had fallen into a deep sleep. Oh no, just like the curse said she would. When she didn't show up for dinner, the king and queen began to worry. Everyone went looking for her. Briar Rose! Briar Rose, where are you? 
When they found her sleeping, the spindle beside her, they all knew that Grimsley was to blame. The king and queen were so upset, but Grand Fairy, the oldest and wisest of all the fairies, had an idea. I can cast a spell that will make everyone in the castle fall asleep and only wake when the princess wakes. Then it will be as if no time has passed at all. The king and queen agreed to it. Grand Fairy summoned all the magic she could, and with a wave of her fairy wand, everyone fell asleep. Yay, magic to the rescue. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, still sleeping. And they slept and slept and slept. Nothing could wake them up. Over the years, the trees grew around the castle like a jungle, and eventually people kind of just forgot that it had ever even existed. But inside the castle, Briar Rose looked exactly as she did the day she fell asleep. Luckily, Grimsley hadn't cursed her dreams, and Briar Rose had plenty of sweet dreams. One time, she dreamed she lived in a land of puppies, just puppies everywhere for as far as the eye could see. Oh, so cute! Puppies! <laughs> and then another time, the puppies were replaced by kittens. <gasps> kittens! <laughs> Actually, there were lots of dreams like that. Puppies, kittens, ponies, unicorns, hamsters, unicorn hamsters. Pretty much anything cute slash awesome and Briar Rose dreamt about it. But Briar Rose's favorite dream was the one with the prince. Ah, the prince. The prince dream always started the same. Briar Rose would wake up bright and early. Then I would walk into the garden where all the birds and woodland creatures would come out to greet me. Hi, Briar Rose. Briar Rose is here. We love you, Briar Rose. I would do the usual dream stuff, like dance around and sing with the animals. But then a handsome prince arrives on horseback. That prince is so handsome. He is, of course, smitten with me and declares he is in love with me at first sight. Oh, princess, I'm in love with you at first sight. Marry me. I can't live without you. I hop onto his horse and we fly around. What? It's a dream. Horses fly in my dream. <laughs> anyway, then he whisks me away to his kingdom and we live happily ever after. <sighs> it's my favorite dream. But it was just that, a dream. Oddly enough, there was a prince from a nearby kingdom who looked a lot like the prince in Briar Rose's dream. His name was Prince John. Prince John and his brother Peter grew up hearing the legend of the sleeping princess and the true love that would save her. Everyone said her castle was somewhere deep in the woods, but no one had been able to find it. No way, I've been all through those woods. That's all just fairy tale stuff. You don't know for sure. It could be true. Yeah, right. Next you're going to tell me the fairies are real. But remember, kids, fairies are real. And they were on the lookout for a prince who might be Briar Rose's one true love. Ooh, this is so exciting. He seems like a nice boy. He doesn't even believe in fairies. No, not that one. The other one. The one who looks all dreamy-eyed whenever anyone mentions the princess. Oh, that one. Yes, he does seem nice. We have to lead him to the castle. Then he'll find Briar Rose. And somehow, they'll fall in love. Haven't figured that part out yet. Maybe we could just sprinkle him with some pixie glitter. Did you hear something? Huh? Gazoon tight. Could have sworn I heard a tiny sneeze. Heh, <laughs> it was probably the fairies. Oh, look, he's handsome too. Let's go tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle that we found the perfect prince. Twinkles and Buttercup flew back towards the castle, excited to tell the other good fairies that they had found a prince for Briar Rose. But they were suddenly stopped in their tracks. Uh, watch out! Hello, Stinkle, Butterpoop. What's up? It's Twinkles! And Buttercup! What are you doing here, Grimsley? You were banned! Yes, but the king and queen who banned me are fast asleep. What are they going to do? Snore me to death? Well, they're going to be awake soon because we found a charming young prince to come break the curse. Yeah, we're going to tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle right now! You are, huh? It'd be a shame if you couldn't do that. What do you mean? What's the matter? Mean fairy got your tongue? <laughs> a 
Okay, have fun with that. See ya! And I will see ya. Because there is no way I'm going to let you break my curse and spoil all my fun! Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Let's keep reading. Chapter 3, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! First, let's check on Briar Rose. Still sleeping. Buttercup and Twinkles thought that they had discovered the perfect match for Briar Rose when they found Prince John. But after Grimsley's curse, they couldn't speak. So how were they gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkles? What would you do if you were there? Oh, I love charades! A bird! A plane! Superman? I think they're trying to say that a bird attacked them. Why don't you just write it down? None of us know how to read or write. Oh, right. They don't teach that at fairy school. How about drawing? Can you guys draw out what you're trying to say? Grimsley casting a spell and they can't talk. Oh, Grimsley cursed you and took your voices. But why? Because they fell in love with the prince. Huh? Oh, oh, I know. They found the prince to break the spell. And then Grimsley must have found out and cursed them so they couldn't tell anyone. Now tell us how to find that prince. Buttercup and Twinkles drew out directions on how to get to the prince's castle, and Grand Fairy and Sparkles set out to find him. Yay, I'm so happy. Let's check on Briar Rose again and see how things are going with her. Still snoozing away. <laughs> Let's see what she's dreaming about. Ah, it's the one about the prince. Really looks like true love, doesn't it? But wait, what's that? It's the bad fairy Grimsley. Oh no, that's not good. We only want Briar Rose to have sweet dreams. Well, let's get back to the story. When Grand Fairy and Sparkle got to the castle, they scooped it out detective style. Got him! Let's go! Remember, try not to scare him. Got it! Hi! <laughs> oh no! He's out cold. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Hey, just like Briar Rose. She's sleeping, he's sleeping. Match me to heaven. Hello, Prince. Wake up. Oh, Prince. Here, allow me. Hey, wake up. Uh. Don't be scared. We're fairies, and we've come to tell you about your true love. Huh? But what the good fairies didn't know, boys and girls, is that they were talking to the wrong prince. Prince Peter. Ugh. The right prince, Prince John, was far away. See, Grimsley had beaten Good Fairy and Sparkle to the castle and captured Prince John. That's right, kids. Grimsley would stop at nothing to foil the Good Fairy's effort to break her spell. What? No, that can't be. Where am I? You're in the Enchanted Kingdom, the land of magic and fairies. And who are you? I'm Grimsley, the greatest fairy of them all. Oh, very impressive. And why am I tied up? Well, I may as well tell you. You are supposed to fall in love with a princess named Briar Rose, a.k.a. Sleeping Beauty. I am? Yes, but she's cursed to sleep for 100 years, and I can't have you going to break the curse. Wait, are you talking about THE Sleeping Beauty? I knew she was real. But wait, why don't you want me to break the curse? I don't want you to break the curse because I'm the one who cursed her. But why did you curse her? Because I'm a bad fairy and that's what I do. Now zip it before I curse you too. Prince John had so many more questions, but he decided he'd better do as Grimsley said and zip it. He soon fell asleep and had a dream, a very sweet dream about a lovely princess. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had fallen asleep and was dreaming of a princess. It was just a dream, but it felt so real. So real that when he woke up, he was very disappointed to find that he was still tied up at Grimsley's. The good news was the bad fairy was nowhere to be seen. Prince John knew that this was his chance. I have to escape. <clears throat> huh, that was easy. Yeah, fun fact, fairies are terrible at tying knots. That's why they never wear shoes with any laces. Oh, now I get it. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. 
Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. But this prince was all wrong. He said, No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Huh? That part wasn't a dream. You see, Granberry and Sparkle had brought Prince Peter to see Briar Rose. They thought he would take one look at Briar Rose and realize he was madly in love with her, but he just saw a sleeping princess with a little bit of drool on her cheek. They asked him, So, are you in love? And Prince Peter replied, You guessed it. No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Why did you think we'd be in love anyway? She's cursing to a deep sleep, and only her true love can wake her up. We thought that might be you. Whoa, this is the legendary Sleeping Beauty. My brother is always going on and on and on about her. It's like he's in love with her or something. Wait, hold up. You have a brother? Yeah. That must be who Twinkles and Buttercup saw. Where is he? I don't know. I saw him leaving with some little lady. Hey, come to think of it, she had wings just like you guys. Grimsley! We have to go rescue that prince! Let's go! Okay, I guess I'll just see myself out. <laughs> that was so funny. The good fairies set off to find Grimsley's hideout, but they wouldn't find Prince John there. He was wandering the enchanted forest trying to get to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It must be around here somewhere. Prince John was determined to find Briar Rose. He trudged through the mud. He swam through alligator-infested waters. He leapt over pits of snakes. Nothing could stop him. That is, until he got to a very large, very tall brick wall covered in vines. Whoa, that is one big wall. Whatever, I'll just climb up the vines. Ow, ow, ooh, ah, ah. You see, the wall was covered in rose vines and prickly thorns, otherwise known as... <gasps> Briars. That's right, kids. Thorny bushes are also known as briars. Prince John wondered if this might be significant. Hey, briars, roses, briar rose. I bet briar rose is on the other side of this wall. And she was. Only trouble was, Prince John would have to climb over the very ouchy wall of thorny briars. But he was determined. The fate of true love kept him going strong. Ah, true love. Ow, ow, ooh, ouch, ooh, ow. About a hundred owls later, and Prince John was at the top of the wall. <gasps> Is this Sleeping Beauty's castle? Wait, what's that noise? That sounds like snoring. This is it. I made it. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm okay. Time to go break the spell. Looks like we're on our way to a happy ending, kids. But wouldn't you know it, trouble was a Bruin in another part of the enchanted forest. Grand Fairy and Sparkle had just made it to Grimsley's hideout and found a very angry Grimsley. And kids, when fairies get angry, watch out. You, you did this. Did what? Released my prisoner. Oh, you mean Briar Rose is one true love? We did it. That looks like he's on his way to break the spell, doesn't it? Not if I get there first. And Grimsley shot out like a cannon. What do you think she's gonna do? I don't know, but we better stop her. Oh, uh, not again. The good fairies knew that they had to stop Grimsley. It was a race against time, good versus evil, but love must prevail. Whoa, that was scary. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had just made it to the sleeping castle. Now, let's go save the princess. Prince John wandered the castle looking for Briar Rose's room, which as it turns out, wasn't too difficult. Well, that was easy. <laughs> All right. Prince John opened the door. You might imagine something like this happened next. My prince, my one true love. Marry me. Oh, so cute. But what really happened is this. Uh, hey, Briar Rose. Um, I think I'm supposed to wake you up. I mean, I don't mean to sound presumptuous or anything, but I might be your true love. It's destiny or something. Um, I guess I'll wait here until you wake up. 
I'm sorry. This is really awkward. I'm just going to wait outside. Woo! I'm okay! <laughs> that was so funny. <gasps> what was that? Sorry, uh, I just fell. <laughs> Briar Rose, you're awake! Who are... <gasps> you're my prince from the dreams! Huh? You dreamed of me? Yeah. Wait, am I awake or is this another dream? Oh, please, please, pretty, please tell me I'm really awake. You're really awake. And she was. Sleeping Beauty was no longer sleeping. Her true love had awakened her by being clumsy and noisy. How romantic. Yay, I'm so happy. Woohoo! <laughs> Wait, what year is it? How long was I out for? Did you hear me snoring? Oh gosh, do I have drool on my face? Please tell me I don't have drool on my face. All good. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, you broke the spell, huh? <laughs> yes, I'm apparently your one true love. I mean, if it's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I already know everything about you. This is so weird, <laughs> but cool. But just as the two lovebirds were getting to know each other, they heard a very odd noise. What is that? It sounds like an airplane. Okay, but what is that? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess those were invented after you were cursed. It's a thing you can fly around in. Oh, what? Cool! Wait, how long was I asleep? Like, almost a full hundred years. Wow, that is so cool. So I'm really, like, over a hundred years old? Is my hair gray? No, it's brown. Um, <laughs> I think we should be more focused on that noise, because it sounds like it's coming right this way. I'm okay. Oh, hello, Briar Rose. You're up. Who are you? It's the bad fairy. We have to run. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my legs are asleep. I can't move. Uh, watch out. I am Grimsley, the greatest fairy of evil, and I curse you. But before she could finish her curse, Briar Rose said, Pull me out of here. Huh. Hey, where'd they go? Once they got out of the castle, Briar Rose tried to wake up the rest of her body. Better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's time to run! Where are we going to go? I don't know. But wherever they ran, Grimsley was going to follow. And she was working up her worst curse yet. A curse? Oh, no. Let's keep reading. Chapter 6. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Briar Rose and Prince John were on the run from the bad fairy Grimsley. Only problem was they didn't know where to go. So they kind of just ran around freaking out. <sighs> Meanwhile, since the 100 years of sleeping spell had been broken, the rest of the castle was waking up. We're awake. Hurrah! But the hurrahs stopped when they found that Briar Rose was not in her room. Where's the princess? <gasps> The princess is missing. That's when, rather conveniently, the good fairies arrived. Grand Fairy and Sparkle were exhausted from flying all over, trying to undo Grimsley's mischief. But they had a job to do, and good fairies never give up. Aw, that is so nice. So, we have some good news and some bad news. Good news is the spell has been broken. Yay! But the bad news... What are they doing? Grimsley cursed them and took their voices. They're trying to tell you the bad news. Which is that Grimsley is planning another curse. And we're not sure what she's going to do. But it's probably very, very, very bad. Oh, no. She must have taken Briar Rose. Don't worry. We'll find her. Let's go, gang. Back in the forest, Briar Rose and Prince John had found what they thought was a great hiding spot. Let's just hang out here for a bit and maybe Grimsley will just give up and leave. But that proved to be wishful thinking because guess who showed up? Oh no, run! Hey guys, what's up? Are we playing hide and seek? Grimsley! <laughs> yep, Grimsley had found them. Not good. Hmm, let's see. What sort of evil spell should I cast? I could turn you into frog. That's always fun. Oh, or how about I turn Briar Rose into a frog and Prince John into a fly? And then Briar the Frog will mm. eat John the Fly. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, no thanks. Oh, I could turn you into donkeys. Have people, have horse, maybe turn you into statues. Oh, I know. I won't turn you into anything at all. You won't? No. 
I'll turn myself into... A dragon? Ah, this is scary. What are we gonna do? Uh, I don't know, run? Okay, maybe not. Fortunately, help was on the way. The good fairies were flying at top speed on the hunt for Grimsley, ready to stop her in her evil tracks. Uh oh! Uh, what's our plan again? Find Grimsley and trap her in this bag. Yeah, I think we'll need a bigger bag. I have an idea. Follow me. The good fairies flew right at Grimsley's face. You know, the one that was breathing fire at everyone? Usually not a good idea, but... Pixie Glitter, now! Hey, get out of here! I can't see! Ow! I burned myself! Well, maybe you should stop breathing fire! Never! Ow! Ha! You're in trouble, villain! Give it up, Grimsley! Yeah, Prince John and Briar Rose have true love. They broke the spell. Yeah, love wins. This was like a poison to Grimsley. Bad fairies do not like love. Ugh, gross. Don't invite me to the wedding. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. Except fairy jail. Is that a thing? We'll figure it out. The important thing was that the day was saved. Grimsley was defeated and forced to undo all her evil spells. Twinkles and Buttercup got their voices back and the Enchanted Kingdom was awake and happy. Normally, we'd say that this was a happy ending, but since Briar Rose and John only just met, let's call this one a happy beginning. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today, we're reading Little Red Riding Hood The Return of the Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I'm the big bad wolf. Oh, <laughs> isn't my costume awesome? I look just like that silly old wolf who thought he'd eat my grandma. She's gonna think this is hilarious. Oh, look at me, I'm the big bad wolf who stinks like cheese. <laughs> oh man, I'm definitely gonna win the costume contest this year. But meanwhile, and voila, I look just like that silly little girl who thought she could get rid of me. Look at me, I'm Little Red Riding Hood. I'm so annoying. I think I'm the best at everything. Well, we'll see who's the best when I win the costume contest. Ha ha ha. That is so not cool. Yep, it was a classic Halloween switcheroo. Let's talk about this costume contest. Every year, the town had a big carnival and the person with the winning costume got a huge prize. This year, it's a Segway. You know, the thingies that you ride around on. I want to win it for my grandma so she can go anywhere she wants. <laughs> but first, time to trick or treat. <laughs> trick or treat. Trick or treat. Trick or treat! It's the most wonderful time of the year. Wow, this is so fun. <gasps> was that? <gasps> no, it couldn't be. The real Big Bad Wolf was captured long ago. There's no way he escaped. But little did Little Red know, the Big Bad Wolf was on the prowl. And he was being very bad indeed. He stole candies from babies. Knocked over old man Jenkins' jack o' lanterns. Hey! He even drank all of Granny Smith's prize winning apple cider. You rascal! The big bad wolf was all trick and no treat. The townspeople loved Halloween and this mutt was ruining it. You're ruining Halloween. But the very last straw was when he ate Granny Smith. <laughs> Let me out of here this instant. Oh no, I hope she's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, remember? The Big Bad Wolf totally had a thing for eating grandmas. Hello, Sheriff. It's me, Jenkins. Old Man Jenkins. How are you? Well, doing all right. But we've got a situation. A wolf dressed as a girl just ate Granny Smith. A girl dressed as a wolf just ate Granny Smith? Yes. Wait, no. It was a... We're on it. Hello? 
are they ever gonna get out of this one? While all this was going down, Little Red Riding Hood was getting more and more frightened that the Big Bad Wolf was in town. I had to go pick up my grandma before the carnival. Unfortunately, the only way to get there is through the super spooky woods. Extra spooky when it's Halloween, and there might be a big bad wolf on the prowl. <gasps> the word had gotten out about Granny Smith, and now the whole town was looking for the culprit. Arrest her! It's her! She's the one who ate Granny Smith! I saw it myself! I'm innocent! I didn't do it! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Little Red Riding Hood was in jail for eating poor old Granny Smith. It's a total mix up. I didn't eat anybody. It's the big bad wolf who did it. Yeah? Then why were you hiding? Looking like a stuffed Thanksgiving goose. A, I was hiding because I was scared. B, I was stuffed with Halloween candy. Not a sweet old lady. What am I, an animal? And see, I think you mean a Thanksgiving turkey who eats goose. Well, okay, Smarty. How come you fit the exact description of the perp? I'm not a perp. Wait, what's a perp? Perpetrator, the one who is guilty. The girl dressed like a wolf, AKA you. It was the big bad wolf, and now he's out there running around. Little Red Riding Hood was right. The big bad wolf was still out there, and he was heading straight for grandma's house. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Trick or treat! Hello, Grandma. Oh my, what a wonderful costume. You look just like that old wolf. Why, thank you. And you sound exactly like him. Go on. You even smell just like him. Gee, what a stinker. Uh-oh. Hey, uh, don't I get a phone call? I want to call my Grandma. That's sweet. Thank you. Hello, Grandma? Grandma, it's an emergency! I'm in jail! Long story, but I have to warn you, the Big Bad Wolf is back! Oh, hello, a Little Red Riding Hood. So good to hear from you. The Big Bad Wolf? Oh no! It's the wolf! Sheriff, the wolf is at my grandma's! Oh, you better not eat my grandma, you mangy mutt! He hung up! Rude! Sheriff, let's go get that wolf! That's it. I'm busting out. Now, how do I do that? If I throw this, I can drag the keys toward me. Oh, great idea, me. <laughs> Bullseye! Bullseye. Adios, sleepyhead. I gotta go fight some crime. Ooh, better fuel up first. Ooh, this is so exciting. Little Red Riding Hood ran all the way to her grandma's house. It was dark and scary, but she was too determined, too brave to be frightened. Ah, ooh, okay, I was a little scared until I realized it was just part of my grandma's Halloween decorations. I made it. <sighs> Time to save grandma. Yeah! Oh, Wolfie, I'm home. Little Red, help. Nice costume. Now let my grandma go. No way. Do it, you stinky wolf. Do I really smell so bad? That's the second comment today. Hey! Ha, gotcha. And yeah, you smell like cheese. Take that, bad guy. <laughs> let me go. This time, you're going to jail. Yoo-hoo, don't forget about me. Granny Smith, is that you in there? Oh, right. And you spit out Granny Smith this instant. OK, fine. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, it was dark in there. Little Red Riding Hood dragged the big bad wolf all the way back to the jail. There's your perp, Sheriff. A wolf dressed as a girl, not the other way around. Hide these so he doesn't get out, okay? See you later, Wolfie. I gotta go win that costume contest. OMG, I love it. And first prize, a brand new segue, goes to Little Red Riding Hood for her wolf costume. Sorry about the mix-up earlier. No problem, Mr. Jenkins. It happens. Grandma, come try out your new segue. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Let's break.
break out the candy. Halloween party time! And that's the story of how Little Red Riding Hood defeated the Big Bad Wolf and saved Halloween. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye! Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. <laughs> Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah! Ah! Monster, run! Thank you for chasing away those bullies. But I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Frankenstein. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, Storytime. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. You've all heard that story, of course, but I'm here to tell you my version. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, long, long ago. Okay, it was actually pretty recent, but I like it when stories start that way. <laughs> anyway, once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a boy named Victor. Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime. Ew! Victor! That is so not cool. And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah! Victor? So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something, something big, Something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm gonna create a monster! Let's keep reading. Victor went down to his laboratory, AKA our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. I should have enough to work with down here. Hmm, let's see. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet, but don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, blew, Fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life! It's alive! Oh no. Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's. It's. It's alive! <laughs> yes! And now we will unleash chaos onto the world! <laughs> okay, monster, let's go! Oh, are you hungry? Uh. Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. 
Nom 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Ah! Whoa! Awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor! You stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right. Sure. A monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But... Oh, no buts. But there was a but. A big one. A real, live monster was on the loose! How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Everywhere the monster went, people screamed and ran. They all thought he was a big and scary monster, but really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... Ah! And that woke the monster. Ah! Oh no, run! The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left. But then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah! Ah! Monster, run! Ah. Take that, bad guy! I think that was his attempt at a smile. Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Ah. Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Well, recess is over, so I have to go. See ya. <laughs> oh no, you're sad. Okay, how about this? You stay. Stay here, okay? And I'll be back later. Can you nod and let me know you understand? Okay. Great. <laughs> School's out at three. I'll see you then. Back in the classroom, I made a list. Fun learning activities for monsters. Then after school, I met back up with the monster and we got to work. First, we practiced language arts. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. Wow, this is so fun. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together and then we shake. Ah. Oh. 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 Ah. Okay, you're doing really great. But can you put me down? <sighs> Good, thanks. All right, next on the list was how do you high five, but let's move on. <laughs> we spent the rest of the afternoon doing our lessons. The monster learned how to sing. <laughs> and how to dance. Go monster, go monster, go, go monster. And we worked on hygiene. Yes, see, after you eat a whole handful of worms and bugs, it's good to wash your hands. <laughs> and speaking of eating, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. 
Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day. From people like this gentleman. I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're going to get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah. yeah! Back to you, Chuck. Oh, dear! I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, Right Foot Blue. Uh. Uh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. <laughs> then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Ah! Well, that was weird. I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Uh, uh, uh. Hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh-uh. What was that? Oh, uh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Uh. Meatloaf. You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya mañana. Bye. <laughs> okay. Good night. Let's keep reading. Phew, that was close. Oh, we can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big sweet softy. Look. <laughs> Yeah, I guess he's not going to wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Let's go. So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well... That was all about to change. We didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Chapter four, here we go. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Uh, is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some of their projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. Oh no, run! What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? 
What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I uh, said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. Oh, hi, guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard... Uh. Come on, Gran, time for bed. Uh. Yeah, that's a kitty, let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your Granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, Granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh oh! That's him. That's the monster. Get him! Oh, this place is crazy. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha! Ah, I'll get ya. Uh. But he missed. Phew. <laughs> but then it landed. Ah! Hey, you stuck me! And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with a pitchfork, he accidentally let another guy's pants on fire. Arr! It was chaos! Finally! We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Arr! Ah, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <coughs> yeah, OK, we'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know, just one more stop. Come on, guys, let's go to Professor Weirdly's. Yay, I'm so happy. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep, awesome, right? Very impressive. Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He even joined the cheer team. He was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. Wow, that was so much fun. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town. And therefore, my fellow compatriots, in our time of being, we... <gasps> that sneaky little punk, Tricky Jack is the worst little trickster in the whole dang town. <gasps> that can't be right. Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town. I'm gonna prove I'm the trickiest one there is. Jack can't beat me, I'm the tricky witch. Whoa, what's that? Hello, Jack. I have to warn you about something important. The Tricky Witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible. I'm the trickiest trickster there is. You may be in major trouble. So, I'm always in trouble. You don't understand. The Tricky Witch will stop at nothing to prove that she is the trickiest one there is. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. 
No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. Hi kids, welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading the story of Jack-O-Lantern. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack was known as the biggest prankster in town. He was always causing trouble, like drawing on the walls, jumping in the public pool, taking candy from the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate lollies. And tying people's shoes together. Oh, that's so not cool. <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town. He even once pants the mayor. And therefore, my fellow compatriots, in our time of being, we... <gasps> that sneaky little punk, Tricky Jack is the worst little trickster in the whole dang town. One day, Jack's antics caught the attention of a sneaky witch. Excuse me, what was it you just said about the trickiest person in town? Jack is the sneakiest little fellow there is, always pranking us and making us unhappy. <gasps> that can't be right. Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town. It's because I'm a witch. That's what we do. It's in the job description. And on that fall day on October 31st, the witch made a decision that will change Jack's life forever. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. I'm gonna prove I'm the trickiest one there is. Jack can't beat me, I'm the tricky witch. Later that day, Jack was walking on the trail back home when a mysterious figure approached him. Whoa, what's that? Hello, Jack. I have to warn you about something important. The tricky witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible. I'm the trickiest trickster there is. You may be in major trouble. So, I'm always in trouble. You don't understand. The tricky witch will stop at nothing to prove that she is the trickiest one there is. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. You need to stop playing tricks on people. Nobody likes it. And the witch will never leave you alone until you behave. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Let her. I bet I'll bother her more than she bothers me. The angel could see that persuading Jack to be better wasn't going to work. Well, if you won't listen to my advice and behave yourself, there is one way to stop the witch, but it won't work for too long. Go on. It's autumn, and the one thing that the witch hates more than anything is the fall harvest. She especially hates root vegetables like pumpkin, squash, potatoes, turnips. She hates potatoes? You mean she doesn't even like french fries? Not one bit. She doesn't even like sweet potato fries. My point is, if you aren't going to be good, you can at least try and stop her with that. But she'll be back. Whatever. I'll be fine. I don't care if she tries to one-up me forever. I'll always be the trickiest guy there is. Well, just in case, I will give you this to ward off the witch, should she come our way. If she touches it, she will be banished from our world and won't be able to come back until next year. Cool, I'll take it. Ew, what's this? It's a turnip. You know, a gourd, a root vegetable, grows in the ground, sometimes put it on salads. Have you ever eaten anything healthy, ever? The only food I eat is candy, french fries, chocolate, and candy. Wow, that's a lot of junk. I bet it hurts your belly. Do you always have a stomach ache? Yes. <laughs> that was hilarious. Anyway, use it to keep the witch away, but remember, she'll never truly leave you alone until you give up your prankster ways and become a good contributor to society. Save the spiel, Jack Ow. And so Jack left the angel and started going home. Just kidding, he pranked her first. Oh, I should have seen that coming. But after pranking the angel, Jack headed home. And once again, as Jack got close to his house, he noticed something else on the path in front of him. Hey, you pile of scrap, out of my way. Please, young man, can you help me up? Hmm, let me think about it. Psych. You just made a big mistake, young Jack, for it is I, the Tricky Witch. <laughs> Witch? Oh no. 
Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack had just pranked the witch and she was not happy. You just made a big mistake, young Jack. Where is I, the tricky witch? <laughs> I've heard you think you're the trickiest lady in town. That I am. I'm the tricky witch. It's in my name. Oh yeah? Well, what kind of tricks do you do? Lots of tricks. I can turn butter into mud. I can make another me. And I can turn tree frogs into regular frogs. That's nothing. I bet you can't even make candy appear out of thin air. Uh, of course I can. Wow, that is so cool. Ooh! Hey, no fair. I didn't make that candy for you. Well, I'm the one that's eating it, so it's mine now. Hmm. You're trickier than I thought. Tell you what, let's do a challenge. At that moment, Jack remembered the angel's words. The witch will never leave you alone until you behave. But the chance to play tricks seemed too much fun and Jack knew what he was going to do. A challenge, you're on. You say you like candy? Well, let's go around from house to house looking for some and see who can get the most. Whoever has the most wins. Well, I'm sure I'll win this one. I'm good at taking candy, but how about we raise the stakes a little bit? If I win, I get to keep all the candy you found. If you win, you get to keep all my candy. Sounds like a deal. Oh, too slow. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Jack and the Tricky Witch walked to the center of town and got ready for the challenge. Whoever could collect the most candy from around town would win. Okay, let's begin. On your mark, get set. Hey, I didn't say go yet, you cheater. But Jack was already collecting as much candy as he could find. He found caramel sweets in an old lady's purse, took lollipops from little children, <laughs> and even went directly to the source, the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate sandwich cookies. Jack felt good about his work, but oh no, the witch had a plan to trick Jack and win the bet. The witch was using her magic to make more candy. She really was a tricky witch. See, there's no way I didn't win this challenge. <laughs> How are they ever gonna get out of this one? A little while later, the challenge was over and Jack met the tricky witch to count up. It was pretty clear who'd won. Ha, it looks like I win. I'm the trickiest one of all. Wow, you sure are. I guess a bet's a bet. Here, take all my candy. Ugh, oh, that was almost too easy. Go on, Tricky Witch, count it up. Oh boy, I love rubbing salt in the wound. Yes, let's count up how much more candy I have now that I have yours too. One, two, three, four. Ah, a root vegetable. He had done it. Jack had tricked the witch. And now you're banished. All of this candy is mine. That is amazing. I may be banished for now, but you'll bet I'll be back. Nobody tricks me and gets away with it. In one year, I will return and get revenge. Yeah, whatever. Revenge, revenge. Well, I'm glad that problem has gone away and will never bother me again. But just when Jack thought all his problems were solved, a familiar face appeared in front of him. The angel had returned. You, what do you want? I told you, Jack, the witch will be back and she will keep coming back again and again until she beats you. You cannot trick her forever. Yes, I can. Want to bet? No, oh, we just went over this. Ugh, never mind. Anyway, beware. When her banishment ends in one year, she will be smarter and trickier than ever before. Well, so will I. That is not something to be proud of, Jack. If you keep playing tricks, you will never be free of her. She will bother you forever and ever. And if she wins, you will be her prisoner. Where would she take me? 
to where she came from, the realm of darkness, a world of ghosts and darkness and evil witches. So I'll just have to keep tricking her forever. That's fine by me. I'll never give up my tricky ways. You say that now, but I'm warning you, a life of trickery and rule breaking is one you will regret. Oh yeah? Wanna bet? No. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. After Jack beat the witch's challenge, Jack was very pleased with himself. He had outsmarted an evil witch and she wouldn't be back for another year, which for Jack felt like a long, long time. But while the next year passed and Jack continued to pull pranks on everyone he met, the angel watched over him. Look at me, I've learned nothing. And so Jack kept pulling his pranks. Soon fall turned into winter. Woohoo! And winter turned into spring. <laughs> My allergies! <laughs> Does anybody have a tissue? I do! <laughs> did you pour pepper on this tissue? Yes, yes I did. Wow, that is so mean. And spring turned into summer. Protect yourself from the sun by my sunscreen. Your sunscreen doesn't work. My whole family is burned. Ha <laughs> I'm hilarious. And winter turned back into fall. Surprise! This is unpleasant. Soon it was October 31st yet again, exactly one year since Jack had last seen the Tricky Witch. Jack woke up and knew that the witch was going to be coming for him. Oh boy, October 31st, the day the witch comes back. I bet I'll trick her again. Jack was a little nervous. What if the witch beat him? He was so anxious that he began walking around town looking for her. He looked everywhere. The fountain at the center of town. Young man, get out of there. That's where the ducks poo. I like it in here. That's so not cool. The local graveyard. Even the mayor's office. Eek! The pencing boy! Get out of here, Jack, you little trickster! As the morning turned into late afternoon, Jack decided to go home. As he strolled past the town's pumpkin patch, he found another figure curled up in the road. Please, young man, can you help me up? Aha! It's the witch! No way, Jose! I didn't even fall for this the first time! Oh, gosh darn it. Hello, Jack. It's me, the Tricky Witch. I'm back and for my revenge. Ah, watch out. You sure can try. You may have tricked me last time, but this time I'll make sure you don't have anything you can use to banish me. Empty your pockets. Hmm, perhaps we should do a classic challenge scenario. How about a race? A race? I love racing. I'm the fastest person in the world. Well, I'm a witch. I can move super fast. Hmm, this road isn't very long. How about instead of racing on foot, let's have a climbing contest. That way, I can keep an eye on you so you don't cheat. And same to you, you cheated last time. So did you, and I still won. Enough, a climbing race it shall be. What should we climb? How about the old patch tree? Whoever gets the top first wins. Deal. Oh, no, too, too slow. slow. As Jack and the witch wandered over the big tree, the angel appeared in the sky for Jack to see. Jack, this is your last chance. You don't have to challenge her. The only way to truly win is to leave her alone. Jack thought it over, but deep down, he already knew what he was going to do. Jack was a trickster through and through, and there was no way he was backing down from the witch's challenge. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Don't worry, angel food cake. I got this. At the base of the tree, Jack and the witch prepared themselves for the climb. Okay, I'll count down. On your mark, get set, go! And so the tricky witch started climbing as fast as she could. She climbed higher and higher and higher. So high that she couldn't even see Jack. She couldn't believe it. It looked like she was winning. But where was Jack? He was running away? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Jack ran as fast as he could to the pumpkin patch nearby and started picking all the pumpkins he could. 
big pumpkins, tiny pumpkins, anything he could. Then he raced back to the tree and started placing the pumpkins at the bottom. Soon there was a whole field of pumpkins at the bottom of the tree. It didn't take long for the witch to realize that Jack hadn't followed her in the race. Hey, what's going on down there? Looks like you've won again. The witch slowly climbed back down the tree, but stayed at the bottom branch as the truth hit her. There was no way for her to get down without hitting one of the pumpkins. Oh, now I get it. Oh, a root vegetable. No! What do you have to say for yourself, witch? Uh, darn it. There's no way for me to get down without being banished again. I have a new idea. What's that? You and I will make a deal. You will never bother me again for as long as I exist. You'll never take me to your home with darkness and ghosts and stuff. And what do I get in return? I'll move these pumpkins away so you can get down. The tricky witch considered Jack's words. Okay, deal. If you move the pumpkins, I will never be able to bother you, and you'll never be allowed to enter the realm of darkness. Deal. You have no idea, do you? About what? Not every deal is as great as it seems. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Sure, whatever. Bye, witch. You'll never bother me again. And as promised, the witch never bothered Jack again. Jack lived the rest of his life pranking people, pulling tricks, and being a troublemaker. He did so until he was a very old man, living alone and friendless. And soon Jack's life was done. I'm ready to go to the next realm. I hope it's fun. But just then, the angel appeared in front of him. Hello, angel food cake. I'm ready for you to take me to my next life. I'm sorry, Jack, but I can't. What do you mean? You weren't a good person. You spent your whole life playing tricks on people. What? Your spirit will stay in this realm and for all of eternity, and you'll never be allowed to leave. Well, that's fine. I can still play pranks and stuff. Well, actually... Psych. You're a ghost, Jack. And in that moment, Jack realized the gravity of what he'd done. He had spent his whole life finding joy in hurting other people. And now, there were consequences. That's so sad. But, but I'll change. I'll be good. I'll do good deeds. It's too late. I gave you the chance to change your ways and do good deeds when you were young. But changing your mind just because you know there are consequences isn't enough. No one should be a good person because they have to be, but because they want to be. So well, what do I do now? I guess that's up to you. As the angel and the witch faded away, Jack was left to wonder about everything he did. Were all the tricks worth it? In exchange for a lifetime of fun, he now had to spend eternity trapped on Earth. This is what I get for not learning my lesson. And so Jack spent the rest of eternity wandering the streets watching. He's been known to prank other tricksters like he once was so that they may not make the same mistakes. Boo! Ah! <laughs> that was so funny. As time passed and Jack continued to haunt the town, his story was passed down from generation to generation. Everyone knew the story of Tricky Jack and how he was trapped on Earth forever. Afraid that he would haunt them, the townspeople treated October 31st as a special day to keep tricksters away. Families would put out candy so that children could enjoy sweets freely instead of taking them like Jack did. And they also put out pumpkins to keep the Tricky Witch away. The lit pumpkins were named jack-o'-lanterns in Jack's honor, like the lantern he held. This special day soon came to be known as Halloween, which we still celebrate today. The end. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West! Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkey swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around till he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo! What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys! Fly! Hi, kids! I'm Miss Booksy, and this is Storytime. Today, we're reading The Wizard of Oz. 
Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey, Farmer Ted. <laughs> he can't hear me, of course. He's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. <laughs> That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog Toto. <laughs> Hi Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. <laughs> Literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy loud sound, it sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? A cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Oh no, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land, or where we're gonna land. Oh, oh Toto. I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow. Okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that? A kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way! I wouldn't even squish a fly! Ask Toto. But you did squish her. Or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise! Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful. She was the worst. Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? A, a witch? Oh, no. But you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch. Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah! Ah! Not here, sillies. The last wicked witch rules over the west, and she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears, poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, it was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, there are no witches in Kansas. <laughs> but you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. <laughs> my house did the flying, but I can't fly. <laughs> I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway. How do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope. Guess you'll just have to stay. Yay! You can be our queen! All hail, queen! What's your name? 
Dorothy? All oh, hail, hail Queen, Queen Dorothy! Dorothy. Hooray! Yeah. Hurrah! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. Oh, All hail, hail the queen. queen Dorothy. Our queen. But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in, wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up. Quick, someone tell a joke. Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house. <laughs> what, too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Yay, magic to the rescue. Well, they are super comfy and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. Ugh, ah! get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's going to help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. 
Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a break. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, phew, I'm pooped. Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay, wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something. I'm never hungry, and that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home, and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East, and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Wow! But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily, I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all ah! those crows. So I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all ah! laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along, and now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. <laughs> Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never! <laughs> Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad, I think. It is sad, enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. 
To the wizard we go! Wait, oil can! Good call! Okay, now to the wizard we go! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 4, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! Hey, look! 475 smiles to Emerald City? I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in smiles. In Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness. And happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. The tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me. And without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story. I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the city of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more smiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? Oh, Whew, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow, that sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait. You're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait, we're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. What do you think is going to happen next? 
Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You can do it. Don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo, you did it. I knew you could. <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work. <laughs> Now let's go meet the wizard! The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nope, nope, not okay. What is that? Kalitas! What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so... <laughs> Kalitas had the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my! Uh, that is scary! Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming! Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalitas! Ah! I've got it! Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. Ah! Phew, that was close. Great job, Tinny. <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Just straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh good, I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister! It's payback time, sweetheart! <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no! We're floating away from the yellow brick road! And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West! The scariest witch of all! The witch? Oh no! What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim! I'll fall apart! And I'll rest! Pedal harder! They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud, and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. 
Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail and I'll pull you to shore. Ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. <gasps> there he is! Shoo, ah! go away! Whew, that was a close one. Dorothy, you came back. Of course! We're here to save you! Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft! Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no, incoming! Oh shush, I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Ooh, poppies. They're so pretty. <laughs> yes, they are. And just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless! I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams! <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy voiced. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic and my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. Sup, boss? Take this girl to my castle. Aye, aye. <laughs> How is Dorothy gonna get home now? Sleep tight, boys. When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine, all mine. <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. <laughs> this frightened the monkeys, <laughs> and they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Okay, that was scary. But look, I'm back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second, these shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. 
Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did! Down here! That is amazing! Oh, hi! <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch! <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, OK. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. OK, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful. Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the Good Witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. 
Oof. Scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not gonna do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around till he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the witch's castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is, we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The witch? Oh, no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, give me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Jeez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dare tried to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No, you give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! Now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that! I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it! Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking. Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh. oh, I'll explain later too. Let's go see the wizard. Oh yeah, now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. 
And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her. Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? <laughs> I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard and well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalinas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then, the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalita's. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later. 
But now, we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... I was thinking... I do that now. Yes. The Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the sapphire slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes! It's quite simple. Take three steps in the sapphire shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home! What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy! <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh. I wonder where Auntie Em and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a Cool School exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only. Oh, I realize I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch! Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. Hi there, so what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> so tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh, <laughs> so what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbly cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili. Award winning. Spicy but not too spicy. Light on the beans. Oh, okay. But what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right. Let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. And what did that do? Made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes please. <laughs> do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra! Oh, this is so cool! <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey, how do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow! Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hottest part. <laughs> so, most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm, one time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough, everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all. I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick-or-treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye! Hi, 
kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Rumpelstiltskin. Wiggle, snap, story time. Long, long ago, there was a dad and he had a kid, a daughter actually. That's me. <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Aw, oh, gee, thank you, King. Thanks a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning, I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of Melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. What? No, that can't be. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me. Why, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay. I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. What would you do if you were there? The elf man worked his magic. He sang while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone, and in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good, I want more. So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return. Oh, and the ship will be full of singing mice who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do. So I, I called out. Ah, uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do ya? I do. I do. I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hay and making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song. But my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. Wow, that is so mean. And he laughed all crazy like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time, when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am. Give me that baby. Ah, watch out. Okay, funny story. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? 
I began to guess. Paul, nah, Mike, nah, Mark, nah, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S-E-A-N. Nope. Sean spelled S-H-A-U-N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. Nope. Oh, nope. I guessed hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. But seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. You think you're just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs> the brunch buffet was pretty good too. Smoked salmon with poi-fection, mwah! The end. Wow, that was so much fun. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time.